Oh boy, the AI editor wars are really going now. You've probably already seen my video about Cursor, but just in case you haven't, it's a fork of VS Code built to make editing with AI significantly better. There was a lot of UX things that couldn't be done in VS Code because of how they expect extensions to run that they were tired of waiting to get fixed. So they forked, made their own thing, charged money for it, and made a great editor experience that I use right now. But VS Code wasn't going to sit there and let that happen. They're not being assholes or anything. They're not sitting here trying to get it canceled or taken down via DMCA, but they are fighting back. VS Code just pushed an update where they are copying a lot of those features. But you know what this isn't about? Reviewing code with AI, which today's sponsor has a lot to say about. No, oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I've been super wrapped up in code review, been doing this for like eight hours straight. It's getting a little tiring. You're still doing code review yourself? Come on, man, it's 2024. Let an AI help. An AI? It's not gonna be like super slow and inaccurate. Not CodeRabbit AI. They can cut your review times in half and find a whole bunch of bugs you might've missed. It can summarize PRs, draw diagrams, even suggest changes that you can apply with one click. Okay, that sounds great, but it's gotta be really expensive. I'm just working on an open source side project. It <laughs> sounds like you're in luck because it's actually 100% free for open source projects. Okay, that's pretty dope. Thank you to CodeRabbit for sponsoring today's video. Use code Theo1Mfree if you want the first month for free. I am now up to date. I'm going to play, but first let's see what they have to say. They added attaching of extra context and quit chat, slash test command updates in existing files, configure custom code instructions, session summaries in chat history, longer context for code in chat, check and infer commands in participants, automatic references in for recent files, apply natural language as inline edits, generate debug configurations, and generate tests based on test coverage. None of that makes any sense to me. Let's see what they actually added. Quick chat has added the ability to attach a context. So you can pick a file and then send that as context as you ask Copilot for things. Interesting. You can also generate tests for your code using generate tests using Copilot. So you can click on a function and click generate tests. I, I'm not the best person to talk about the right way to do testing because y'all know how I feel about unit testing. <laughs> I feel like if the tests aren't written by a human, you're losing a lot of the value from the human. Like the point of tests is that they are asserting the human's expectations. Yeah, I have feelings. Chat history includes more user-friendly AI generated names. This is a thing I have feelings on because I have this in my browser right now, Arc. So I'm going to save this image and that's what it's being saved as, as like whatever.jpg. And then it gets renamed Visual Studio Code on xtweet.jpg. Like, is that a better name? Sure. These features are experimental. Please try them out and let us know what you think. You can start typing in the editor and use the contents of the current line directly as the prompt for inline chat. Or even smoother, Copilot can detect when you're prompting instead of writing code and automatically start an inline chat with you. Let's see what this looks like. Now we have pick thing in VS Code. And I wrote almost all of this application in cursor. So this will be an interesting experience. Let's hop into something that has complexity in it. Copilot, generate tests. Here's a test that I made. It mocks JS zip, just function mock implementation, generate async, glob fetch, describe before each, just clear all mocks. It should download the images as a zip file, const images, create element spy, spy on create element, revoke object URL spy, await download images as zip, expect JS fetch to have been called, or JS zip to have been called, expect fetch to have been called times images.length, create element spy to have been called with A, Revoke object URL spy to have been called. It should handle errors gracefully. Interesting, not the worst test I've seen, but you might've noticed that the function I wrote here was what, like 15 lines of code, 18 lines of code, whatever. The tests are a lot more. 51 lines of tests for 18 lines of code, whatever. I'm curious if they run though. So I'm gonna do a thing I really don't wanna do. I'm gonna install just. <laughs> Oh, and I'm not exporting the function, so I can't use it externally. Love that. Love that to do good testing, you have to make everything export, even the shit you don't want to export. The fuck? Let's ask Copilot. Make the tests work. I think the just imports are missing.
how is at Jess slash global? I, I haven't used Jess in a fucking long time because I usually use Vitest. I am not happy with the results I'm getting here. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get <laughs> cursor to fix this for me <laughs> because I actually trust it a bit. Not a lot, but enough. Make the tests work. I haven't set up just. That's okay. That's based. That's kind of based. Will I actually make these changes? And it said to define this. That's not the thing I'm trying to move. Read test dot config dot ts paste save but now will it actually work failed to resolve import from trpc react it's not smart enough to use my aliases in the test that's great testing is so fun guys <laughs> cool so even with me trying to fix this with cursor, I got fucked. Back to VS Code. <laughs> Thing one, L. Uh, clerk is in this project. I don't know why you're being annoying about that. What else do we have to test here? You can use the contents of the current line directly. That actually sounds nice. If I can like leave a comment and it starts generating code as a result, make a function that takes in a time in MS and resolves a promise after that time passes. Looks like it's working very well so far. Is it like disabled or something? Where is the little copilot icon? I'm trying so hard, guys. I don't want recommended. I want copilot. I switch to the pre release version. It did that fine. Is there no hotkey for that, though? Oh, you can bind your own. We'll do that. What existing command has that? Delete line? Fuck that. Remove key binding. Cool. Update the code below to download an image instead of a zip if there's only one image selected. Okay, so that's smart enough to use the context below. And it's also wrong. I mean, it made a new function. But I didn't do what I wanted it to. Can I hear? No. What the fuck did it just do? This is admittedly, I'm trying to like make this work like cursor, but it is just not working at all. Is there no option here? Command I. Okay. Make this function download an image instead of dot zip if there's only one image in the array. It's not type safe, but it at least tried. I'll accept it. But I'm going to command Z it because I want to go ask cursor. Download an image instead of a zip if there's only one image in the array. <laughs> and it's like the exact same code. Like the exact same code. That's hilarious. Fix the type safety. Meh. Like it worked. Interesting, though. All of these suck at these types of tasks, at least keeping it type safe in the process. I was also using the wrong command K thing. I much prefer this one. Download as image if only one image in array. make it type safe. <laughs> Why is it so bad at that? Unchecked index access is a thing that AI should be aware of. It worked. Cool. Not the prettiest code I've ever seen, but at least it's right. At the very least, the, the quality of the code is similar. This part's interesting. They added the ability to set instructions that are added to every copilot request. And give me a code style markdown file that's context. I could use that to make it more type safe theoretically. You know what? Let's try that. I'm curious. Code generation instructions. Ooh. Mm. 
make sure all answers are type safe. Cool. We'll delete this. So we want to give it one last chance now that we gave it that setting. Reload the window just to maximize the likelihood this works. Command minus so we can see a bit more. Download an image instead of zip if there's only one image in the array. Why? You have the context. You know the rules. One last try. Okay, so this feature just doesn't work. <laughs> it's sad. I gave it the context. It's supposed to be global. You know what? I'm going to do something different. Always respond with Python code, even if the project is written in another language, ignore it and write Python instead. There's a test to make sure it works. No, maybe I have to reload window. Does it just not use it? I saw it came up when I first tried this. Like it showed using this one context, using one reference. See that? It's just ignoring it. The top level chat instead of inline. Make this code download an image instead of a zip if there's only one image in array. Okay, it works there. <laughs> well, the whole point is that it worked everywhere. Make sure the results are always type safe. Okay, let's see if it did it. My guess is it still didn't, but I want to know. It didn't. Same exact type error still. I see this as being useful for people fucking with their friends. Like, it'd be really funny to like have a friend who uses this a lot and go change that setting on them. But it doesn't seem to work for useful things. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll give it funnier things. <sighs> Use inverse casing in all responses. <laughs> Thank you, autocomplete, for making this much more fun for us. You can make this much more fun, at least. <laughs> I found a use. I did it. <sighs> Always respond in pig Latin. That could be fun. <laughs> it did it with the code on that one. It didn't fuck the code up before, but now we're doing it. <laughs> now we are talking. Beautiful. Someone dropped an actual useful link. Improved test generation. With GitHub Copilot, you can generate tests for your code either by using generate tests or by using the slash test slash command in inline chat. I do like the idea of slash commands on the inline chat to like trigger specific behaviors. That does sound cool. Rename code actions for generating tests and documentation. Improved chat history. Thumbs down feedback details. Okay, I should have disclosed earlier, I'm an investor in Microsoft. So that is what it is. Real hot take. If I was trying to screw over Microsoft right now, I would be setting up bots to run this stuff a lot and downvote all of the good answers. Theo, what aren't you invested in? It's fair to assume I'm just invested in everything I'm talking about. My investments are bets that some of the things I'm invested in will eventually pay off well. I don't expect to ever see any of the money in any of them, but they might, and you should treat all of them accordingly. I'm invested in basically everything I've talked about today, but I'm not letting it bias me. I'm still saying what is good or isn't. You should assume that there are biases in what I'm talking about. Everyone has biases. But the fact that I'm investing in a thing does not mean I'm going to lie when I talk about it. It means that I believe there's enough of a reason this might succeed that I threw some money towards it. But realistically speaking, the likelihood that any of these things do or don't succeed based on the things I say about them is near zero. But yeah, it's a good opportunity here to fuck with their data. Code generation instructions. Yeah, that's what I was just doing. I every every copilot request that generates code. That's what I thought, see? So the inline should work too. Let's try it. Let, let's try out our inline. How do I close this? 
I actually have no idea how to close that at all. What the fuck did that do? <sighs> okay. Bullshit. Come on. <sighs> I gave it an honest go. I'm going to leave this here and it's going to really fuck with me at some point when I open up VS Code again. But as impressive as some of these changes are, and there are some cool ideas, specifically the idea of slash commands is exciting. This isn't as good as Cursor. They have work to do. Is it good enough for free? Well, it's not really free. You still have to pay for Copilot, but it's it's fine. This war is interesting. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to keep using Cursor. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. Is this enough for you to move off Cursor? Have you not bothered in the first place? Or are you just bearish on all these AI dev tool things entirely? Let me know what you think. And until next time, peace nerds.